Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Jack Elliott? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case. I'll move to the timeline of the alleged crimes, then offer my analysis. In 2019, Jack Elliott lived with his parents, Brett and Amy, in Newport Beach, California. He graduated from Corona Del Mar High School and was looking forward to attending Texas Christian University in Fort Worth, Texas. He was interested in a career in commercial real estate. Jack invited future Texas Christian University students to his parents' house for a party before leaving for college. At this party, he met another student named Delaney Brennan. They initiated what appears to be a casual romantic relationship. On Thursday, October 10, 2019, eight weeks after Jack's college adventure started, he and a few of his friends used a borrowed vehicle to drive to a three-day music festival in Austin, Texas. Jack and a few of his friends had fake identification, which they used to illegally purchase alcohol. On Monday, October 14, the group of students was still in the Austin area. Using separate vehicles, Jack and 11 of his friends made their way to a marina at Lake Travis, which is a man-made lake northwest of Austin. One of Jack's friends was named Carson Neal. Carson's father managed the marina on the lake and owned a 22-foot boat. Jack and his friends took the boat onto the lake, but not before making sure they had plenty of alcohol. Carson had some experience with boats. For example, he had once taken a boating safety class. He showed his friends where the life jackets were stowed on the boat, but no one remembers any other safety information being communicated. As Carson was piloting the boat, his friends played loud music and were dancing on the deck. Carson gave the wheel to a friend of his named L. Weber because Carson wanted to take his turn at wakeboarding. L. only had a little experience operating a boat. The group ran out of beer, therefore they returned to the marina. Carson entered the office at the marina and retrieved a 12-pack from the refrigerator. The group returned to the lake and continued their party activity. Carson set the cruise control at just over 11 miles per hour, and once again, L was at the wheel. At about 8.27 p.m., Jack Elliott and his new casual romantic interest, Delaney Brennan, were on the railing at the bow of the boat. Evidently, they were flirting and kissing. Delaney gave Jack what was described as a playful little push. Jack fell off of the boat, went under the boat, and was struck by the propeller. He did not survive. Carson took control of the vessel and turned around. He navigated to where he believed Jack had traveled into the water. Members of the group used their cell phone flashlights and screamed Jack's name. Their extensive search effort lasted for less than five minutes, at which point they started back toward the marina. On the way, they threw the alcohol overboard. One of the partiers said that the scene was extreme hysteria. I guess this is as opposed to relaxed or calm hysteria. Elle Weber called 911. She identified herself using the name Elle McPherson, like the famous supermodel. Later, she would claim under oath that she didn't know who Elle McPherson was. Considering that both Carson and Elle had been drinking, a member of the group who did not drink, Anthony Salazar, was asked to say that he had been piloting the vessel. Allegedly, Anthony agreed with this plan. The police were waiting for the boat as it pulled into the marina. They separated the group members and interviewed them. Their stories did not match up. It took the authorities 10 days to find Jack's body. It was at a depth of 109 feet. After a lot of work to untangle the many lies told by the college students, investigators were able to figure out what happened. When L was piloting the boat under Carson's supervision, Delaney pushed Jack off the boat. One student said that Delaney kept repeating, he fell, I didn't mean to push him. Carson threw the alcohol overboard and several students lied to investigators. In late 2021, five of the students were indicted. Delaney Brennan was indicted for tampering with evidence. 
This is because she allegedly deleted a cell phone video. This charge is a felony. Carson Neal was indicted for the same charge, but for a different reason. He allegedly dumped the alcohol overboard. Anthony Salazar was indicted on a misdemeanor charge of perjury. Al Weber was indicted for giving false information to a police officer. This is also a misdemeanor. Another member of the group named Joshua Evans was indicted for furnishing alcohol to a minor. At the time making this video, no one has been convicted in connection with this incident. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few items that stood out to me in this case. Item number one. Many young people are impulsive and irresponsible. One of the main objectives of the age group represented in this story is simply survival. Like just getting through this time without being arrested, injured, killed, or falsely claiming to be a supermodel. Allowing 12 people in this age range to take a boat onto a lake by themselves is extremely unwise. In addition, these young people decided that adding alcohol to the situation would somehow make it better. Not all of them were old enough to legally consume alcohol. It worries me that the students could see a crime in progress, the underage drinking, and think that it was just okay to hang around, like nothing could possibly go wrong. Why worry that the activity is illegal? The contempt for the law featured in this case is evident from the very beginning. Item number two. When Jack Elliott was killed, the surviving students on the boat may have had some empathy, but it was not powerful enough to overcome their desire to escape the consequences of their behavior. They really did not seem to appreciate that a person had died. Almost like they were thinking, well, dying is terrible and all, but he's gone, so there's nothing we can do for him. We should work diligently to protect our own interests. What they should have done is immediately contacted the authorities and offered accurate information. As far as their other behavior, they should have remained silent. Like the whole mess with the alcohol. They didn't have to say anything to the police. Which brings me to item number three. It's amazing how quickly deception appeared to be a viable course of action for this group. Elle Weber did not even give her real last name to the police. Instead, she gave the name of a supermodel who was featured in five episodes of the TV show Friends. Elle McPherson played Joey Tribbiani's roommate and eventual girlfriend. Did Elle Weber really think that the police wouldn't figure this out? Like the police would realize the last name was fake and say, well, there's nothing we can do now. She gave us a fake name. We are never going to figure out who she is. Did Elle somehow forget that she was on the boat with the other students? Maybe she thought she could just blend in with the crowd as they disembarked? One could argue that giving a fake last name is not a big deal, but other students lied about serious issues. For example, they said that Jack did a backflip off of the boat. They said that he was vomiting and fell off. And of course, they lied about who was piloting the vessel. It's curious these students believe they could manipulate the police with such lazy and obvious deception. They literally could not go into the water without one of them being killed, but they thought they could outsmart investigators. Which brings me to item number four. There's the sense that this group thought that they could recreate some of the elements of the 1997 movie, I Know What You Did Last Summer. There are a number of similarities between the two stories. Both involve young people trying to have a good time, a death related to water, and a conspiracy to cover up that death. I think the problem with this group of students is that they didn't watch the entire movie before they decided to attempt a recreation. Things don't work out too well for the characters in the film. There's a man with a hook, a lot of screaming, and multiple murders. One lesson here is how it's important to watch the movie to the end before being inspired by the film. This is like somebody being inspired to go on a cruise because they watched the first 20 minutes of the movie Titanic. Item number five, what do I think about the charges brought forward in this case? Here's how I look at this. I think that all people should be given a chance for redemption for minor mistakes and even somewhat serious mistakes. Like maybe they should be convicted, but be given the opportunity to have their records expunged. The charges in this particular case were probably pursued because somebody died. There is the sense that the police were angry and maybe not so familiar with boating. For example, they said that Jack fell off the front of the boat. Usually that's referred to as the bow. At least the police officers didn't say that he was hit by the shiny spinning thing that makes the water angry. I'm not confident that these charges are well supported by the evidence. Let's take a look at them. Starting with the tampering with evidence charges. Again, these stemmed from the deletion of the video and from throwing alcohol overboard. 
The death of Jack Elliot does appear to be more or less an accident. Therefore, it may not have occurred to the students that destroying evidence was a crime. I think they could get them for littering, but felony charges in this case seem a bit heavy-handed. Moving to the misdemeanor furnishing alcohol to a minor, I can understand investigators pressing forward with this charge. Alcohol makes everything worse, especially for those who are underage. Looking at the misdemeanor perjury and misdemeanor supplying false information to the police charges, I can understand these charges. The students should not have spoken to the police at all, but if they insisted on talking, they should have not attempted to mislead them. Even still, I always find it ironic when the police charge someone for lying to them, even though the police routinely lie to the public. I'm not a big fan of the law trying to make people into criminals just because they were doing something they should not have been in an area where something terrible happened, like someone dying. These young people are going to have to live with their poor decisions for the rest of their lives. They did not go out onto that boat with the intention of anyone dying. Rather than making examples of these students for small to moderate level offenses, I think it would be better to use this as a learning opportunity about the dangers of alcohol, arrogance, impulsivity, and poor decision making. Those are my thoughts in the case of Jack Elliott. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.